We're now reading from the New Testament. We are reading from uh, the letter, of the third letter of John. The third letter of John. This is the live translation from the Church of Kifisia in Athens, Greece. The letter, the third letter of Apostle John. The elder to my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy to have some brothers come and tell you, tell, tell about uh, your faithfulness to the truth and how you continue to walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Dear friend, you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church about your love. You will do well to send them on their way in a manner worthy of God. It was for the, sh for the sake of the name that they went out, receiving no help from the pagans. We ought therefore to show hospitality to such men, so that we may work together for the truth. I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will have nothing to do with us. So if I come, we'll call, I will call attention to what he is doing, gossiping maliciously about us. Not satisfied with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. Dear friend, do not imitate that what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone, and even by the truth itself. We also speak well of him, and you know that our testimony is true. I have much to write you, but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. I hope that... I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace to you, the friends. He send their greetings. Greet the friends there by name. Amen. Now, this is the last letter of the New Testament, of the Gospel of God, Jesus Christ. And we could say, and I could dare say, that the result the conclusion rather of Christ and now he is paying attention he's focusing on three people three people within the same church and I'm gonna repeat this three people within the same church not different churches or different places same place same church John himself and for us, Christ is speaking to us. And He speaks to three different kinds of people within the church. One of them is Gaius. Someone that He confirms that He loves in truth. I love in the truth. I love truly. And He couldn't lie. John wouldn't lie. He loves Him through the truthfulness of the gospel. There's Diotrephes who wants to be first and enjoys it. And, and we will see who he is. And there's also someone else, Demetrius, who is well spoken of by everyone. He uh, is in the church. He now is big, uh, it's not, he's still young in age, rather. But let us start with D Diotrephes. Who loves to be first? Chapter verse nine. Someone who God blessed, and He raised him up in the church. Unfortunately, though his heart changed, he became uh, he he received the glory of God, but he didn't pay attention to his heart. And he started boasting, going more, becoming uh, greater to his eyes. And he didn't pay attention to the doctrine of God. 
and the doctrine of God says that you need to humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God and then he will raise you up and also pay attention all your sorrows cast on his shoulders with the certainty that he will take care of you he didn't pay attention to himself or the doctrine of God and that had a result the result was that he became an image for us to not follow to not be um, to not take an example of and what are his characteristics he is talking maliciously about us gossiping apart from being from being boasting someone who thinks that he's the best the first there's no one like me but Apostle Paul says that I am the least of all the Apostles he the rather says that I am the first of all the Saints I'm the greatest amazing isn't it what is the opinion that you have for yourself are you first of all the Saints the greatest the best Apostle Paul, he says for himself that I am the worst, the least of all the saints. A great difference, isn't it? I know, I'm not, I'm not making mistakes, ever. Listen to me. Do not listen to others, listen to me. And he starts maliciously gossiping about the people of God, saying, saying, And that's not enough. He's not uh, paying attention to his brethren. He's not accepting them. He rejected them in his heart. In other words, he's not thinking as others being greater than him. He's not th considering that all others are greater than him. But he thinks that he is greater than all others he's not accepting them he's not welcoming them but the Lord says what if anyone thinks or believes something different God will reveal things to him as well do not speak harshly do not gossip maliciously and do not uh, decline the any of any of your brothers and not just that he's not accepting them and the ones that that want to accept them he puts them out of the church isn't that amazing he refuses to welcome the brothers and the ones that also want to 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 welcome them he puts them out of the church he obstructs them saying to them do not accept them Not only he puts them out of the church, stops them rather, but he also puts them out of the church. Difficult, isn't it? It's very difficult for a person to, to be boasting because the, the Lord is standing against the ones that are um, boasting in heart. And the one who is boasting... has characteristics that we need to know about so that we may test ourselves we don't want to see others and uh, judge them no we want to see ourselves we want to go up to the mountain we want to test ourselves and see and say that it's my fault it's only my fault and I've said this before I went to the Lord one day and I said that Lord this is his fault no, the Lord replied, this is your fault. But you, Lord, no. I've said this before. We uh, were fighting. And I went to my praying corner and I said, Lord, you know that I'm right. Tell her to come and say sorry to me. And I heard the voice of God, go, you may be there in time. I was new in faith then. And I was terrified. 
And as I was thinking about it, in fear, my wife came in and said, Lord, uh, George, I'm sorry. And she managed to repent. Only the one who is repenting, only the one who is humbling himself, thinking to others as being greater, he will find the grace of God in his life. It's not about us being right. It's about us finding the grace of God in our lives. It's about us harvesting. It's for us. It's about us eating and having enough. That is what matters. But who is doing that? The Lord is bringing that reward, not us. The one who is boastful, he's seeking out for things that, is, that are not his. The word of God says, not me, but the Lord. But he says, me, not the Lord. What does it mean? Why, you, why would you say me? I'm doing this. I've done this. What does that mean? Not me, but the Lord. Then the Lord will be, ble will be happy with you and he will bless you. But as he blesses you, you will go out louder and louder. Not me, the Lord. Because you're not able to do anything. All good deeds. And whatever there is good in your life is given to you by God from the Father of lights. There is nothing good with you. You have received anything that is, everything that is good with you. That is why you need to look out. Look at your storages. Look at your work. Do not look at the, uh, your brethren. Do not look at others. It's not our place to judge or pass judgment or compare. Our job is to understand and test our own selves and test ourselves in front of the eyes of God. When we go up to the mountains, we said before, this is our job. And never forget, brothers and sisters, that the enemy is the king of all the boastful people, but our Lord is Jesus Christ. If we say, I've done this, I did this, I know, you don't know, then immediately your king becomes the enemy of your soul. Why? Because you entered now into the, to the lines of boasting into the realms of boasting. May God protect us. That This is important. There's nothing good with us. Whatever we have and it's good, God has given us. And if you see someone being blessed by God, you need to be happy and pray so that God may bless him even more. Do not be jealous. Do not compare yourself to him. Lord, please bless him more. Personally, in his household, professionally, in, in the church, anywhere, bless him more and more, more than me. Can you truly say that? More than me. Can you truly say that, though? I've said this before. Uh, as an example, I, was, I prayed for a brother, and I said, Lord, please bless him. And I'm hearing the word of God again. I heard the word of God again, and he said to me, Should I bless him more than you? I said, Not more than me. Because the heart is maleficent, it's hardened. But I've learned right after that. And I said, Lord, please bless them more, more than I. Why? Because they are greater than I. What am I? I am a servant. And he, who, anyone who wants to be great, don't want to be great. But if you want to receive the glory of God in your life, you need to be the least. You need to be a slave, a servant of all. Do you understand what it means for you to be a servant? You're not passing judgment. You're not quarreling with him. But you are serving him with all your heart, mind and soul. Because you love him. If you are passing judgment, you're not loving your brother or sister. If you're passing judgment, you do not love them. If you're quarreling with them, you don't love them. If you're not accepting them, you don't love them. And what are you then? You are a son of boasting. May God protect us. 
But uh, he, the, Diotrephes is the first in the church. No, he loves to be first. May God protect us. May God protect us indeed. The least of all the saints, my dear brethren, I pray, I plead with you, let us think in that way, as if God is pleading with us. Let us consider ourselves as being the least of all the saints. It's not you, it is I. Personally, let us think in that way, in my heart, in my eyes, in my soul. I need to consider myself as being the least or the last of all the saints because th all these people around you are the sons of God. What would be the end with diatrophy? It's not good. I can tell you that. There's no possibility for him to have a good end unless he manages, manages to repent and say, Lord, please forgive me because the word of God says, and it is very important, I've set you to be a God, to say the truth, to speak the truth rather. If the one who's a sinner listens and repents, I'm going to bless him even in the last moment. If the saint repents and sins at the last moment, he will be judged. It doesn't matter our past. Our past doesn't matter. What matters is at that moment when the trumpet of God is heard, when the voice of the archangel is heard, where will your heart be? Will there be bitterness? Will there be jealousy? Quarreling? Judgment? Comparisons? Or will your heart be truly a heart that is broken? A heart that will be pleading with God. And your spirit, will your spirit be boasting or will it be humble? Dress on humility as you are obedient to your brethren. You need to, be, to learn how to obey your brothers to all things. Blessed be the name of God for his word. My God, protect us from the spirit of Diotrephes. The least of all the apostles. We now see someone who God and the elder John and God loves in the truth. And he loves them because he has two main characteristics. He studies the word of God and he is walking accordingly to the gospel of God. He knows the truth and he walks by the truth. That is the first characteristic. And the second one, he loves but with the love of God that is poured out into his heart in his praying corner. He is not loving with human love, with passionality. He is accepting me, so I will love him. He is with me, so I'm going to take care of him. No. He loves in truth. God loves all his people. All the ones that want to come back and repent so that he may save him. Do you love all peoples? All peoples. Your brothers, not just your brothers, all peoples. Your enemies. The ones that are speaking badly against you the ones that are bringing judgment against you, the ones that are hating you rather, the ones that are not accepting you, and the ones that are harming you, and are, they, they are persecuting you. Because if you do love them, then you will be perfect. Become perfect as imitators of God and walk in truth, says the word of God. That person, therefore, had these two characteristics. This person, Gaius, the truthfulness of the gospel, because he teacher was only Jesus Christ, the only master and teacher. In truth, up, up, up on that mountain, the mountain of God, the mountain of the Lord, and his manager, his guide, his guide was the spirit of the truth, the spirit of God. And through the gospel of God, through the guidance of the Spirit, 
he was able to have these characteristics, these nice characteristics. He knew the truth and he was able to walk by that truth. And our Lord says, I have no greater joy, have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. That is in verse 4. They're not living in the Spirit, but they are walking in the Spirit. They're walking in the truth. What is that truth? One word. Humble yourself underneath the mighty hand of God, and then He will raise you up. That is the only truth. That is the word of truth. has nothing to do with loving being first. Nothing to do with uh, judgment, quarreling. Aggravation, words, my God protect us. Gossiping. We're not supposed to talk and say, but rather we are supposed to exalt God. We are supposed to praise God so that our mindset may be cleansed and our hearts may be clear. And the second characteristic is that He loves. But He loves in the truth with the love of God that is poured out, continuously pouring out because of the Spirit and through the Spirit in His heart, continuously, because He is continuously being baptized with the Spirit, continuously filled rather with the Spirit, continuously going up to the mountain of God, and He is studying and praying, and His heart is filled with that love, but the fatherly love to all peoples, to all brothers and sisters, all peoples and, pe and, and without any jealousy, without any fear or anger, without hatred. But only the love of God that is poured down into his heart because of the Spirit of God. And he has actions of truth. And these works of truth is that you would do well when uh, you would do well when you uh, you are doing well rather when you are sending them out uh, in a manner worthy of God. The ones that are weary, you are visiting. The ones that are weak, you are strengthening because of the Spirit and through the power of God. The ones that have fallen, you are strengthening, founding them up. You are helping helping them out. You are a help that is prepared to your brother, always, for your brother, rather. I have help that is prepared, imitator of God, as Paul was an imitator of Christ, and we are imitators of Paul. We want to be, rather. A prepared help to any issue, any problem that may arise, help us, God. The first characteristic of love and the second one is, it was for the sake of the name. Rather, uh, we are supposed to welcome the brothers. And we are not supposed to stop those who want to do so. Welcome. You, did you invite to your house that brother? Of course, because I'm going to pray with him, because I love that brother. But he says that and that about me and you. I love him even more than. We are supposed to welcome, we are supposed to invite, not in partiality, but through the fatherly, godly love that is poured out into our heart. We are supposed to welcome the brothers, and in that manner, we are now becoming co-workers into the serving of God. We do thank God. And I'm going to repeat this. This is the last letter of the, first of, the ch of the first apostolic church. This is the conclusion of the New Testament. To that person, therefore, Christ says this, I am and, and I pray, rather, and it, there's very great power into the prayer of the brothers. I pray that you may enjoy good health because you have these characteristics. Truthfulness, and you walk by that truth. Love, 
but not with tongue, but with actions and deeds. Therefore, um, pray. I pray that you may enjoy good health in whatever you are doing, and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Perfect health. That perfect health is the holiness, the sanctification of the body, of the soul and the spirit. Only the God of peace can give you that sanctification, can allow you, can help you out rather, in sanctifying yourself in that way. And why would that be the case? Why would guys enjoy these things? Because firstly, he's asking for the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God in his life. And the kingdom of God is the righteousness of God, the peace of the Spirit, and the love of God. And anyone who works in that way, he is pleasing God, and he will receive progress. And the righteousness of God, that is love and truth. And that person that has all these in his life, he will be blessed in whatever he is doing. And he will enjoy good health. And all will go well with him, even as his soul is getting along well. Always. Can you comprehend that? Always. Because God is, Christ is praying for that person. Because Christ is praying for you. Now, let us go to the third example. A new brother who entered the church and is well spoken of by everyone. Everyone loves him. What, what a good brother he is. And they doing that in, tru in the truth. He doesn't have anything good, anything important. He is a young, a, a young person, not as glorious, let's say, as Diotrephes. He's a small, young brother, but he's well spoken of by everyone. He is walking in the truth and he loves. And he is up on the mountain of God and he is enjoying the, uh, the, the, the love of God in his life. And he concludes now in the New Testament, I might be wrong here, but this is how I think about it, the conclusion of the New Testament. I could, I could write to you much, so much more. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. But I hope to see you soon and we will talk face to face, says in verse 13. I do like that very much indeed. Please, Lord, make me such a servant and help me out to be a friend, a good friend of yours, holy, so that I, so that we may speak face to face. God wants it. I want this, but if God doesn't do it, it won't happen for you. It's not possible for you to do so when you are taking care of your paneled houses, when you are passing judgment, when you are quarreling, when you are gossiping maliciously, that will not happen for you. To the ones that are humble, God will provide grace. To the ones that are humble in heart. Please, Lord, give to us then a spirit that is humble, not a spirit that is malicious, but humble, a heart that is broken, that loves. But the main characteristic for us to tremble into the Word of God, please, Lord, give us uh, reverence, because Jesus Christ Himself, He was heard from His Father. When he was crying out to the Lord, he was asking for help. He was heard because of his reverence. Because he was trembling the word of God. He's saying to us, Christ himself, the mindset of Christ needs to be in you. And he, as he was a God, he didn't consider it a theft to abandon his glory of God of his godliness and become equal to God and he emptied himself not from his godliness but from his glory he emptied himself 
as he became a servant. What does it mean? A servant of all. He became a servant and he became equal to people. And as he became equal to people, and that is a great truth, he humbled himself even more. He became a servant to God the Father. With reverence, he was praying to God, his Father. He humbled himself even more. He became a servant of his Father until the death, death of the cross. And that had the result that God raised him up and he gave him the name above all names up in front of which all knees will bow on earth, in the skies and below earth. And every tongue will confess that he is the Lord. That mindset, we want to have, Lord. The mindset of Jesus Christ, of the living God, the only one who is able to intercede between God and man so that you may be able to intercede between God and people, you personally, so that you may be able to pray and for your prayer to be heard for the blessing of all peoples because you love them with the love of God in your heart that is poured out into your heart through the Spirit. Nice, isn't it? It's very nice for your prayers to be heard. Beautiful. It's very nice for your prayers, your household prayers to be heard. It's very nice for you to see your household go from blessing to blessing, from glory to glory, from grace to grace. For your work, your, the work of your hands to be blessed and the sanctification in your life to be the result of the studying of the Word of God and the feeling of the Spirit of God in you, the fullness of the Spirit in you. My God, our Father, sow mercy on us, sow grace on us, and lead us to the truthfulness of the gospel as He reveals to us the things that will happen, the future, personally, household level, and church level, and for our nation. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask this. I mean.